Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to my channel. This is going to be a pick a card reading focusing on what current challenges you are facing as well as how you can kind of face those challenges and move past them. Um, so go ahead and pick a card. We got card number one, number two, number three, and number four. The links to the timestamps are down in the description box. Okay, pile number one. Um, funny story, I was flipping up your uh, tarot cards here and we got the Queen of Wands, Seven of Cups, the Queen of Cups, and the King of Pentacles. And since there's, I was like, wow, that's a lot of people. And they're all surrounding this like Seven of Cups, like indecisive indecision energy. And and I also thought it was interesting how the Queens were on either side and the King was at the top. And I was like, this, these people are having trouble almost like figuring out who they want to be or who they are, or they're having trouble like expressing their their authenticity. They don't know who they are. They don't know what is true for them. Um, either they're confused about it or they are afraid of expressing it. And and then I popped up the uh, um, this divine animal card here. And the card is Jackal, which is about truth. <laughs> and this is actually like the penultimate card in the deck. It's number 44 of a 44 card deck. Um, all about basically expressing your radical authenticity no matter like how afraid you are to do it and thinking about what kind of legacy you want to leave uh you know when, once you leave the body do you want people to remember you being uh the person that the kind of watered down version of yourself that you project to others in order to stay safe or do you want to live your radical authentic truth and project that out into the world and have that left even if that means you're misunderstood in your time um, you know, maybe he'll be missing, he'll be understood, you know, after you pass. So I, I, I wish that I had, uh, uh, kind of flipped them all up in that order <laughs> on the camera, but I, uh, I was trying to figure out how to fit them all, uh, on the camera and I didn't expect it to like unfold that quickly, uh, flipping them up in that order. So, uh, I just, I, it's really worth emphasizing here that before I'd seen this truth card, uh, I was sitting here just looking at these tarot cards thinking that these people are having trouble uh, finding their authenticity and, and expressing their truth. Because the Seven of Cups has, is that obviously like really indecision energy. And <laughs> it's funny that this is an octopus here because octopuses actually have like brains in each one of their legs. Um, so that really, ima imagine what that would be like to have a part of your brain literally inside of each one of your eight limbs. <laughs> like really spread out and capable of multitasking and surrounded by all of these people. Like it's like each one of these tentacles is reaching towards like, Hmm, do I want to be the queen of wands today? I could be the queen of wands. I could embody that really magnetic energy, or I could be the queen of cups. I could be emotional. I could be very feminine. I could be in touch with my intuition, or I could be the king of pentacles. You know, I, I can be the, you know, the Lord of the earth. I can be the physical manifestation of abundance and stability and security. You know, I feel like you guys feel like you have the potential to be all of these things. And, and like, since you're capable of wearing so many hats, maybe, maybe you guys sometimes don't even know which one is authentically you. I mean, maybe they are all authentically you. Maybe you are that diverse, but that can obviously come with a little bit of a confusion about, you know, maybe you look at other people and they seem so specific and so defined and you, you're wondering, well, am I supposed to be that specific? Am I supposed to be that defined? Um, well, not necessarily. Maybe it is your role to embody all of these energies. Um, and I think it's absolutely okay to do that as long as it is actually you. You know, if maybe you don't have to choose. Maybe the Seven of Cups is saying, you know, you don't, usually it's that, you know, careful with your choices, but maybe you don't have to choose. Maybe you can really live all of your different selves. As long as you can do that from a place of authenticity, I think that would be completely okay. But then again, if you do feel like you've been kind of taking on the shades of other people, like living like a chameleon, and that that isn't how you feel like that, that doesn't feel like your inner truth, then, you know, don't be doing that. You maybe you need to take a time out, um, get away from so many external influences and find out, you know, which one, uh, you actually are, you know, like so often we pick up so many, uh, 
you know, emotions, thoughts, thought patterns and energies from other people. And we kind of lose ourselves in them and we don't uh, even really realize how much you're picking up from other people. And this is more people, <laughs> some people are more prone to this than others. Um, like personally, I pick up other people's like anxieties and I like amplify them. Like even just walking to an, into a grocery store, I feel like wham, like I'm suddenly taking on <laughs> everybody's like worries and anxieties. And it, it really like drags me down just trying to, you know, buy some bread and milk. Um, but I don't so much pick up other people's identities, but I have friends uh, and, you know, people in my family who really, really do like almost like parrot back what other people say because they get so wrapped up in everybody else um, that they literally just start echoing back other people. Like they're the kind of people who, you know, everybody else starts laughing. So they laugh even though they didn't get the joke or, you know, somebody makes a comment and then they literally just like repeat the same comment. They just paraphrase back other people. Uh, and to me, that's kind of creepy. And uh, I think it's usually creepy to the people doing it. And they realize that, you know, that they're not living their authentic truth and that's really distressing to them. So you guys uh, either, I feel like this can go two ways, you know, since there's going to be different types of people tuning into this. Um, you could either be, your challenge right now is to either embody all of your personalities, all of the aspects of yourself, bring them all together and say, hey, I don't have to choose because all of these things are, are authentically me. I'm just a really diverse person. I can live all of these as my truth. Or you need to figure out, you know, which one of these people are you? Are you the queen of wands, the queen of cups, the king of pentacles? Or maybe you're none of them. Maybe you're something else entirely. And you need to figure out what that is and express your radical, radical truth. Thinking about how you want to be remembered after you leave the body, right? What do you want to leave behind? And uh, <laughs> a fiery climax approaches. So I almost feel like you guys have been really thinking about this and kind of stewing on it, and that it's almost like a pressure cooker inside of you that uh, you feel like almost like you're a truth bomb about to go off. And so, you know, don't like judge yourself. Don't feel bad about how you haven't been expressing your authentic truth. Because, you know, this has been your journey. This has been your lesson. This has been what you've been working on. And that's totally fine. Uh, so, you know, you don't have to sit there and, you know, shit on yourself over it. Because soon this is going to this is gonna explode. Full moon and Aries, a fiery climax approaches. Uh, and this is so cool because Aries is, you know, that energy of, you know, I am what I am and that's it. Like, I, I am because I am sort of thing. You know, Descartes says, you know, I think, therefore I am. I feel like, you know, Aries would say, I am, therefore I am. So you're just going to, you guys are going to be figuring out who you are and then you're just going to be it and you're going to explode like a truth bomb out into the people around you. And, you know, at first they might be like, like what, what's going on? Because people do get taken aback when the people around them, especially like, you know, family or close friends seem to be changing. Um, but, you know, try not to, try not to like, let that, you know, disturb your waters too much, you know, you know, and if you have to tell them, be like, look, I feel like I've been, you know, on a journey of self-discovery and find figuring out who I am. And now I really want to be, you know, the new me, you know, and anybody who is worth having in your life and who cares about you will understand that and, you know, will support you. And, you know, with just a little bit of time to let the, like, you know, the waves in the waters settle, um, you'll be able to be your new self and the people around you will support you. And if somebody doesn't, then it's better that, you know, they get out of your life anyway. And I think that's all I'm seeing for pile number one. So thank you for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, or leave me a comment if this resonated with you. This is a new project for me. So I really like hearing from anybody who's uh, tuning into this. Um, hope to see you guys again soon. Bye. Okay, pile number two. Welcome to your reading. Uh, you guys... I feel are trying to embody a new, a new way of thinking and it's making you not feel so great and it's not coming across or not working out as quickly as you wanted to. Um, you know, you've got the page of swords here, which is your new mental paradigm, your new journey into this new idea. I almost feel like somebody might be leaving a religion, um, it's that, it's that kind of mentality. You know, it doesn't have to be a religion, but um, 
any kind of previous thought system that you had that was restraining you or that had kind of defined the way you were living your life, even if it's just like maybe you were somebody who was, you know, working a corporate job for the last 10 years and now, you know, want to go uh, <laughs> briefcase to backpack and, and, you know, go travel the world like that. Anything that's taking a, you're taking a new, a new venture into a new idea, a new way like a new way of viewing the world and that is how uh and it's actually going to be changing how you're living your life and this is causing a lot of uh this is causing a lot of <sighs> conflict and just kind of making you feel like shit because up here we have the five of pentacles and you maybe feel like this guy this poor little mouse on crutches begging you know with his little alms cup the, this is just feeling like you're in the gutter and you don't know how to get out of it. I feel like you guys, um, you know, we also have the, the strength card. So you guys absolutely have the strength to see this through. And you're going to be, even right now, even currently, because this is like the bottom card. So I see this is kind of your foundational energy here. Um, so these feelings of like anxiety and stress and being beaten up and being grind, grind through the mud, um, are in a way superficial. I mean, that doesn't mean that you're not feeling them very strongly and that they're not serious for you and like, you know, it shouldn't be taken seriously. Um, but you absolutely have like the fortitude to see this through. You're going to ride these waves because deep, deep down, you guys are undergoing this change because you have already, you know, in your past paradigms, cultivated this you, like you're, you're like a rock <laughs> and you emanate this energy that actually like tames you know the beasts around you so you guys can you guys can absolutely absolutely do this absolutely do this so as you walk this path trying to figure out your new way of being um it's not going to like you know resolve itself magically right away because seven of pentacles which is you know He's sitting there. This guy's not feeling great. Usually the Seven of Pentacles is more of like a, almost like a meditative energy to me. Uh, most of the decks I have actually show, like often show the Seven of Pentacles as like a dude meditating. This dude isn't really meditating. He's more kind of like sulking. So which is, I think, kind of like a lower frequency version of this. You kind of just sit there and suffer while you wait, you know, for this, uh, this phase of your life to, to settle and to pass. Or, you know, you could really find your neutrality and meditate. Uh, and that will help you... Um, kind of wait through this because the seven of pentacles is like a waiting you got you're waiting for everything to resolve itself and you're waiting basically for enough time to go by so that you can you know move on from being move on from being the page of swords you know you're going to be able to that's not an energy you stay in forever that's an energy of when you're starting a journey you're going to be able to evolve and move on for that but it's not going to happen right away and so the challenge for you is to find a better way of like coping with this as you go through these big shifts as you're you know waiting for your mind to deal with the fact that you just uh you know left your religion left school left your career um maybe you're just going through a, a spiritual awakening and you're trying to sort out all of your these new ideas that you're having the things you're curious about um Whatever it is that's happening to you guys, you need to be tapping into your inner strength and not focusing on your your five of pentacles like suffering energy. Don't don't focus on the suffering. And I mean, mindfulness and like zooming out, getting a bird's eye view and finding your neutrality is what's going to help you with that. Because this whole transitional period that you're in will pass. You know, this too shall pass. You're you're going to get through it once enough time goes by. I mean, it might take a couple of months a few months. Um, but once enough time goes by, this is going to resolve itself and you're going to be able to graduate from the page of Pentac uh, page of swords and really then you'll be embodying your strength energy. And I'd like to pull a card from the divine animal oracle here. Let's see what we got. Armadillo. Groundedness.
there we go, guys. <laughs> I feel like you guys can really be this. Uh, man, this is really similar to the strength card. It's almost like these beings are taming the armadillo. Um, you know, not uh, not with whips, not with chains or anything, but just with the uh, their presence. And you know, what's funny is that there actually were giant uh, armadillos like this back in the day. Um, yeah, this is, this is so, so similar to the strength card. And the sun is shining. Guys, remember that the sun is shining on you while you go through these transitions. And groundedness, that is really, really up with that. Um, I'm going to put that over here. Make Let that hang out with the seven of pentacles. Um, I would add with that, um, instead of just doing, you know, silent, um, you know, Vipassana style mindfulness meditation, you might really benefit from grounding meditations, you know, you can look those up, you can look through guided meditations, guided visualizations and all that. But uh, what I like to do is just imagine, um, you can imagine like a red laser beam going from your root chakra all the way down to the core of the earth. Or you can imagine roots growing down, down, down deep into the earth, like coming out of your root chakra or your feet. Um, if you can do that while sitting outside in the sun, barefoot, <laughs> with your feet planted in the dirt, um, that is like really ideal. But you know, even if you live on like the 40th story of a high rise you can still do that from from up there you know as you just need to um you know hold the vision um of you grounding deep into the earth and that will give you this stability you need uh to tap into your inner strength while you ride out these waves and uh one more card i think for you guys let's pull a moon card What do you need to release? Waning moon. So what you need to release to me really calls back to this, uh, you know, I think one of the first things I said when I started this reading was that somebody is like leaving a religion or leaving a career or leaving, you know, their mental paradigm behind. So what you guys need to release is definitely some kind of structure or thought system. And I mean, it could be something else. If you guys will know, you know, what, what, whatever your thoughts are going to immediately, the first thing you thought of when I said that, that is what this is. Um, so just try to embody that, uh, the page of swords, you know, don't be afraid to embark on this new journey and don't be afraid to leave behind whatever uh, needs to be left behind. Cause I think you guys have been really cultivating this for like a long time. Like, you know, you know, when people are in relationships, sometimes they, they feel that breakup coming, you know, for years, sometimes for years and years, people know they're going to break up, uh, but they just never really get around to doing it. <laughs> um, and they can feel it cooking and cooking. And I'm reminded of people, some people I know, they never feel like, like they can like initiate the change they need in their life. Like maybe they hate their job. And instead of just like, you know, facing it and saying, I need to quit my job, I need to find a new job and just, you know, step by step taking care of the problem they will like they feel like they can't face the world like that or they can't like initiate those kind of changes so what they do instead is like self-sabotage and basically really self-destruct to the point where they end up getting fired and it's like instead of just quitting they put themselves in a situation where they forced where their physical reality like forced them to do it. It was like they manipulated their environment into manipulating them, which is to me, that is just the weirdest, most roundabout way of doing it. But I I've seen people do this and I've talked to them about it and they know they're doing it when they do it. Like th this is real. I mean, to me, it's really weird, but so I would really recommend like, you know, if you know there's something you need to release and there's no, you know, there's a, a system that you're trying to um, put behind you and move on from uh, just face that and do it. Use your strength, you know, Summon the magic of the armadillo if you need to uh, and start that change. Don't manipulate your reality into manipulating you. You have the power within you to make the changes you want to make. You don't need to do this weird roundabout merry-go-round. And I think that's the end of your guys' reading. So thank you so much for tuning in. Please, you know, like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. This is a new project for me. So I would, I really like hearing from anybody who is tuning into this. And I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye. Hey, Pile 3, welcome to your reading. The first thing I'm getting here is that this Six of Pentacles, you know, it's that card of, can be charity, it can be reciprocity. Really, it means that, you know, energy is flowing from one party to another and not always back again. Um, so you could be the person, 
like ideally like this card's like highest like vibration it would be somebody with a lot of like a lot to give and they can give freely and they can give to people in need who uh you know who really could use a leg up and that's working out for everybody and it's not causing any harm to the person who is giving um or you know it's like lowest vibration you know you could be the person who's just desperately like needing to receive uh charity um i feel really for the mo for me right now this card is really resonating more as a you're being sucked dry you are in the position to be giving to people right now but maybe you've given too much or maybe you're getting like low you're just getting low on energy um or you know physical resources it is the six of pentacles maybe somebody's been like literally sucking money out of your bank account or maybe you've just been like doing too much housework and looking after people too much and it's really uh getting you down um and i'm seeing it that way because of we also have you know this card hanging out with the ten of swords which is this beautiful peacock who's you know <laughs> in in this card it's been shot and it hasn't you know this peacock you know if you were hunting a peacock with a bow and arrow you would probably just shoot it once this peacock has been shot 10 times so like way overkill way way overkill on this poor <laughs> beautiful creature and up top here five of wands you know this is more conflict energy all these people are fighting you know i almost feel like somebody is in a family situation where everybody in the house is fighting you know, it could be a work situation, or maybe you just feel like this is the energy you're you're tapping into for the whole collect collective consciousness, like everything that's happening on the planet right now, and it's just getting you down, like getting you so so down. You feel like how how, how can I live on this? I don't want to live on this planet anymore with this much conflict going on around me. It, you feel like you're just being stabbed over and over and over again. Like I I I could really feel you guys just feeling like drained, dry, and like everything has just been just like i i just i'm just seeing like the ocean like a storming ocean waves like pounding and pounding and pounding and hitting uh you know like a castle wall <laughs> so you got i feel like you guys have been like fighting this battle for a long time but you know the good thing about the ten of swords is it is that like final death so yeah whatever has been beating you down finally did beat you down <laughs> but that means it's over it's you can put it behind you now this is all ending and uh the good news card here is you know what is coming your way is the ace of pentacles and to see an ace after the ten of swords is is just beautiful because it really emphasizes that fact that whatever was happening to you you know that whole journey of going through the swords um you know of just conflict and nightmares and psychic attacks and overthinking to the point of it you know making you want to throw yourself in off a cliff that's all done it's all done and now you get to be you get to enter this new world and it's the ace of pentacles so i feel like your new world is going to be a lot more uh has the potential to be abundant and beautiful and luxurious and comfortable for you and like a like almost like a safe space but not in like a you know a like a college kid, you know, really like, you know, kind of woe is me, I need to be kept safe kind of way because you guys don't need to be kept safe because you've been through the ringer and you guys have that inner strength. But this is just going to be, I think you're going to be entering a world where you're going to be getting the support and comfort you deserve. Finally, your external environment will be able to reflect um, what you always imagined for yourself on the inside. Like this cute little fox here, you know, this purple in the background, which is that like regal royal colors, one pentacle shining in the heavens, like, you know, like a star above him. Um, you know, the only thing you can say about the aces is that it's it's a beginning. It's like the seed has been planted and there's all this potential for, for growth and stuff. So you will have to navigate, you know, the waters, navigate your path as you figure out how to... Uh, how to grow, you know, your one pentacle, you know, but I think you're, you're, you guys are out of the story of the swords, um, you know, which, which ends in the final death, but, and you're going to be entering the, the, the journey of the pentacles, which goes all the way from the ace of pentacles. It's like, you know, stories of back in the day, you know, somebody gets to Ellis Island, um, you know, with nothing but 25 cents in their pocket and, you know, and they, by the time they die, you know, they're, they're rich or they're wealthy, or even if they're not rich, you know, they've built this life, but they have a family and, 
you know, it's the Ten of Pentacles. You can get to the Ten of Pentacles if you're starting from the Ace of Pentacles. So I would say moving forward, it's going to be absolutely like encouraged for you guys to focus on your material environment and don't feel like that is bad. You know, we don't, if you're watching this, you're probably having some kind of, you know, spiritual uh, tendencies, right? Um, and a lot of times spiritual people feel like they need to focus just on that, like just on ascension, just on enlightenment and that they, and that focusing on anything like material, like, you know, eating a bucket of ice cream, buying nice clothes, putting on makeup and looking pretty and going out and having fun. Those things are almost like looked down on as, you know, being like not spiritual or getting in the way of your ascension or whatever it is. Right. But I mean, you know, ascetics, maybe, you know, last 2000 years in order to reach enlightenment, you had to be a monk sitting on a mountaintop doing nothing but meditating and fasting for 40 years. Right. But I don't think that's, that's not, that's not it anymore. That's a past paradigm. That paradigm is over. You can now, you know, be as spiritual and enlightened and you can evolve your consciousness as much as you want while simultaneously living in the world and enjoying an abundant material life. We, we can have both now. That is how I feel part of this like shift into, you know, fifth dimensional consciousness is we're, we're going to be able to have such more richer, multifaceted lives because our consciousness is consciousnesses <laughs> are richer and more multifaceted. So you can absolutely have it all and do it all. You can live your spiritual life and, you know, ascend if you think of it that way and, you know, buy your lakeshore house and have your nice cars and, and the family you always wanted and eating delicious foods and, you know, having a throwing a party once a week, you can do these things and it doesn't have to take away from your spiritual journey, you know, unless you let it. It's entirely possible to get too distracted in the material world, but I don't think that's going to be happening to you guys because you've already been through the ringer. And I think you guys have your priorities straight. So the challenge here will be to kind of keep it together while you make this transition because from the pain of the Ten of Swords into your, your new world. And... I'd like to pull just one card for you guys. Uh, one more oracle card from the Starseed Oracle. All right. Baby steps. Action. Follow your intuition before it makes sense. Just look at this card for a minute. You're on the cliff. The abyss of possibility is before you. And you're going through this portal. To climb this mountain, you had to take it one step at a time, one step at a time. But you got here and you guys are about to go through the portal. And that portal, that, that, this is so perfect. That portal is the Ten of Swords. You know, you, you had to reach the end of your past paradigm in order to go through that portal. And it's leading to the Ace of Pentacles. <laughs> um, and like I was saying about having to kind of figure it out as you go, that's your baby steps. Um, you don't need to see your trajectory all the way before you. Just like when you're at the bottom of a mountain, trying to climb up this mountain to get to this uh, portal here, you can't see the whole path before you, but you know if you just keep on taking your steps, putting one foot in front of the other, just breathing and climbing one step at a time that you'll get there. And that portal is waiting for you. So hang in there, guys, because you're going to get to the top of that mountain. I think you're already there. I, I feel like you guys really... Um, you're there right in front of this portal. You the climb is behind you and all you have to do is step through. I think I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, thanks for tuning in guys. Uh, if this resonated with you, please like subscribe and leave me a comment. This is a new project for me. So I'd really like to hear from anybody who is tuning into this. I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye. Okay. Pile number four. Welcome to your reading. Uh, you guys have the fool surrounded by bullshit you guys don't want to deal with. <laughs> uh, I feel like you, you guys are the fool here in the center, almost like the eye of the storm that you guys are kind of really wanting to kind of walk off and whistle your tune and mind your own business and embark on, embark on your journey. But around you is, uh, first of all, somebody telling you like three of wands, right? Which is that card of like the ships coming in. This dude, it's more of like he's like serving the land. And I, I really, and he's like this like lizard looking guy. 
Uh, I don't know. This Three of Wands feels like less auspicious to me than in other decks. It's almost like somebody, especially just in the context of all these other cards here, like somebody's telling you, like, you need to take life more seriously. You need to be, like... Maybe you're trying to start a business and somebody keeps telling you like, oh, you know, you need to get a business consultant and you need to figure this all out. And you need to think ahead and, you know, get it all planned. You know, like this is like a surveyor energy to me. And you're just kind of like, well, I don't want to, you know, do it that way. I just want to do it my way. I just want to like follow my heart, follow my intuition, you know, be the fool on my hero's journey. And I just want to you know, do it my way, but but people are telling you you got to do it by the book, and you don't want to. And then over here, uh, up top here, um, yeah, I'd like to do this one first. Five of Cups, and what is interesting is that two of the other readings also had five a, a five card at the top. Um, so that really tells me that there is this like that the collective subconscious has is feeling like embattled right now. I mean, which makes sense. It's you know I'm filming this in February 2020. There's lots of shit going down. <laughs> I mean, as always, right? But right now I feel like this is one of those periods where like the collective stress is kind of being dialed up a bit. Um, and for you guys, it's really manifesting as like emotional instability, but I don't think it's really affecting you guys personally too much, except maybe you're absorbing it from other people. Cause again, you know, you're the fool, but there's this five of cups energy around you. And you know, here it's a, a woman with like a fish head. <laughs> I don't know. Imagine how you might feel if you woke up one day and found out you had a fish for a head. Like, like, like you know, your head was gone and yours was a fish. Like, um, and it's also really emphasizing that water energy is just, you know, the emotional quality to it and how, you know, when you're, you're swimming and somebody like disturbs the water and you can feel it because those ripples ripple through and you can feel what's happening to everybody uh, all around you. You can feel how they're moving. You can feel how the water is flowing. So, I think you guys, I think really the challenge for you guys here is how to maintain your zero point field, you, your deep, deep neutrality, the neutrality of the fool, how to maintain your equanimity when everything around you is in chaos. Um, also, nine of wands, more, you know, not really conflict energy, but this is a guy who's been through conflict and now he is exhausted. Uh, funny story, I actually pulled this card for myself this morning when I woke up and I don't know, I woke up just feeling like crap and I actually think I felt like crap because I like overdid the like overdid the energy work last night. Um, I actually ha had a I had a free trial for like a meditation app, kind of the kind of meditations that take you through like doing different types of energy work like with shamans and energy healers and stuff and uh the free trial was ending last night so I was like well I gotta like you know do as many of these as I can and I did some really like high frequency ones that were trying to like really shift things about you know your field and uh and you know then I was all amped up and I couldn't sleep and you know I ended up taking some Benadryl to help me sleep <laughs> and I woke up just like oh my god like that was a bad idea like why you know I know better not to do that right normally when you're doing energy work you want to be you want to do one thing and you know and then like let it integrate which can take however long it takes for a person you know from you know a couple of from like a day to like a few months depending on what it is and you know I decided last night just to go nuts and it was a mistake and I woke up feeling like the nine of wands and I was like, okay, how do I, how do I fix this? Um, you know, so I sat in my chair with my, with my dog and went into meditation, but not, not meditation with the purpose of doing anything just into like pure neutrality. Like I was like, I don't have any agenda because sometimes, you know, you go into meditation trying to make, you know, trying to connect with, you know, interdimensional beings or, you know, your guides or your angels or, you know, whatever that is for you. Um, a lot of time when I go into meditation, I'm inviting like contact from, from my guides, let's say. And, but this time I was like, no, I'm just going to sit here. I'm just going to drop deep down into the zero point field, into this fool energy and just, and just sit. And actually like the whole time I was like meditating for about an hour, but I don't really feel like I, you know, like objectively I wasn't even really meditating because the whole time I like, I could like, see my thoughts, you know, going, you know, outside of my consciousness and I couldn't really stop them. So I wasn't really meditating that well because 
I didn't really stop thinking, but at the same time, I was, you know, I, I was here, I was my consciousness over here and my thoughts were like running around outside of my consciousness and I was able to just observe them. Um, and that was really helpful for me because it just like let all of my thoughts play out without me being um, entangled in them and I was just observing them and letting them go. And then after about an hour of that, I felt like way better. <laughs> you know, I got up and I was like, okay, now I feel like I can make a video. Um, like, like I got this and I feel like that just dropping down, dropping down into that neutrality and just letting things play out around me wow, this like reading could be for me. <laughs> Drop down into your neutrality and let all these external energies of struggle and suffering and exhaustion, let that all just play out around you and hold, hold your full energy, hold your deep, deep neutrality as you be the center here. Like, I don't know how else to put that. You need to just sit in your consciousness, in the center, be the eye of the hurricane, guys. Be the eye of the hurricane. Um, I'd like to pull two cards, two more cards. One sec. I'm gonna pull Starseed Oracle and a Moon card to finish off here. Let's see what other messages might be coming through for you guys. All paths lead home inner authority intuition turn your gaze within <laughs> what up uh look this is even uh i don't know if this is a spiral or if it's a series of concentric circles but uh she's pointing to the center she's saying be centered <laughs> guys what was that what was i uh literally just saying you know so this woman right here is telling you Find your center, be centered. That center is where your inner authority is. That's where your intuition is. It's where your intuition wants to lead you and, you know, turn your gaze within. I don't even feel like I need to talk anymore about this card. It like <laughs> how perfect. Um, so yeah, you know, you want to be the fool at the center of all of this energy. Get centered, meditate, you know, be neutral, all of that. That is wonderfully synchronous and just one more moon card here don't let your past hold you back south node So if in the past you guys have been more kind of in the storm rather than the eye of the hurricane, and I think that applies to basically everybody, right? Basically everybody. <laughs> so you don't want to be falling back. This is, a, to me, this is a reminder not to fall back into previous ways of being. You know, you don't want to be hanging out like in these outer circles. You want to be, you know focusing on your new journey, your new journey, the full. You don't want to be falling back into whatever journey you were on before you had this like new new rebirth as the full. And, you know, take a look at your, really, this is an invitation to me to, if you've never looked at your birth chart, uh, really looking, you know, beyond just, you know, your sun sign and your moon sign, take a look at your north and south node um, and where and what signs they're in and also what houses that they're in. For me, you know, for example, I have uh, my south node is Virgo uh, in the 10th house, <laughs> which, you know, tells me, you know, that in my past, I was really, really nitpicky and, and serious and critical and uh, micromanagey and overorganized, um, you know, kind of all those really low frequency um, th uh, things related to Virgo. Not that Virgo, I think, you know, on its best day embodies those energies that, you know, every, every sign has its like low frequency, like, you know, shitty, uh, aspects. And those are the ones I would associate with Virgo in, 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 in the 10th house. Um, and in like, I absolutely have, um, been through phases of my life, you know, where I did nothing but focus on my career or, you know, when I was in school, you know, it was focusing on school, which is the same type of energy to me. Right. Um, to the exclusion of all else and just being so left-brained, so critical, so 
way overly organized. And for me, that this is actually is really significant to me because I have memories from my most recent past life where, you know, I had sacrificed my entire world, like my family life, you know, the well-being of my family members, basically for the pursuit of my career. Um, and I mean, I could I could really, you know, get more into that. Um, but I, I think that that's like a whole different topic. I think I'll leave it at that for now. Um, you know, so for me, like I've had to let go of all this south node energy um, with my north node being in Pisces in the fourth house, which is obviously like completely different. I'm having to I'm really, I really had to work on entering that Piscean energy of like dissolving uh, into the mystery is how I'll, I'll sum that up and focusing on fourth house matters, you know, my family. And, uh, before I got married, uh, my husband was from a different country and he basically, he had to, he had to stay in the country he was living in and I had to move to his country. And so I had to <laughs> throw away my career for the sake of, you know, being with the guy I loved. Right. And that was like such a North node moment for me. I had to, I had to sit there and go, well, okay, I could throw away the love of my life or I could throw away my career, which is it going to be? And I mean, I picked love. And for me, that was really in a, that was really aligned for me. That was in alignment, you know, to my, uh, for my soul, because <laughs> I mean, look, I got my North node is in Pisces in the fourth house. I didn't know anything about that at the time. Um, but looking back, it's just funny how, I mean, thankfully I made the choice that I did and I didn't fall into previous patterns of, my past lives where I would throw away my family life uh, just to focus on my career. Cause that might be, that might be the proper thing for some people. If you've been way too focused on, you know, if you have the opposite, if you're, if your nodes are in like well, the opposite of what, what I just described, it might be time for you to focus on your career. Um, even if that means uh, letting your love life or your family take a little bit of a backseat uh, for the time. But so Take a look at your astrological chart. Go take a deep dive into your node, into your nodes, and that might give you a little bit of a hint um, of where this fool's journey is going. I, I really, I like how the nodes connect to the fool. Um, so you want to be moving away from your south node energy and moving into your north node energy. And all paths, all paths lead home. I went on a real tangent. <laughs> there about the nodes and and my personal story, but I think that must have been relevant to somebody. Um, but just to bring it all back here to your challenge, with this conflict energy around you, don't absorb all of these just sludgy, sludgy, sludgy energies from other people. Try not to absorb them. Find your neutrality. Align your hero's journey with your north node, with your ideal future, with the future that is most in line with your with the evolution of your consciousness the journey that resonates with your soul and that will take you home. I mean, and it's not even like you guys can fuck this up because like all paths lead home, all paths lead home. So even if you may, even if you don't worry about making the wrong choice, cause even if you do, that's fine. All paths lead home. You know, maybe part of, part of your journey was making that mistake one more time. And then next time you'll have, you'll, you know, you'll be able to write the course in the future and you never know what kind of mistakes, are actually part of your path. And you can't tell until until way down the road, right? Not until you have that bird's eye view and you can see how everything is leading, leading out. So get aligned, find your center, but also don't, don't stress about this. Don't stress about this because all paths lead home. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I love hearing from people who are tuning into this because this is a new project for me. So I uh, hope to see you guys again soon. Bye.